for what they would be telling us. Yeah. Let us know. Do they want us to jump ahead to the first story? Sure. Maybe. Quickly? Is that what they're saying? Uh, that's a great transition. Uh, good morning. You're watching Fox and Friends First on this Thursday morning. I'm Todd Pyro. And I'm Jillian Mealy. So let's go ahead and begin here on the border. Fox News has learned the vice president will visit the Northern Triangle in June as images show cartels using TikTok to recruit American teens to smuggle migrants. And in just hours, President Biden will kick off a two day virtual summit on climate change with world leaders. David Spunt, join us live from Washington with a very busy day ahead. David, good morning. Hi, good morning to you both. It was just a few weeks ago when the vice president uh, laughed when she was asked directly if she was going to visit the border. Uh, that clearly made some headlines there. She's not visiting the border, but as Jillian said, she'll be visiting the Northern Triangle countries. A source from the vice president's office confirms this will happen in June. She'll visit Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. But before she does that, on Monday, April 26, she will have a virtual meeting with the president of Guatemala. She has spoken to him before, spoke to him in March, talking about the migrant crisis on the southern border. Now, these countries, these three countries I mentioned, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, these are countries where a large chunk of those seeking asylum are coming from through Mexico to the United States. Fox News' Adam Shaw and Aisha Hosni are reporting that cartels on the southern border are targeting American teenagers through social media. These are American teenagers, specifically through the app TikTok, to encourage these teens to to help smuggle people into the United States, in some cases are paying two or three grand to do so. These migrants seeking asylum continue to come to the border. The latest numbers we have from Border Patrol, 320 migrants apprehended by Border Patrol agents in 48 hours, just two days. Meanwhile, Arizona's Republican Governor Doug Ducey said he's furious about the lack of visits from top administration levels to Arizona's border towns. There's a lot of focus on Texas. The governor says that's fine, but he wants more light on Arizona's border problems. And he's not alone. He activated the National Guard. Both Democratic senators, Kirsten Sinema and Mark Kelly, support that decision. Not a single member of the administration has paid us a visit here in Yuma or any of Arizona's other border cities. President Biden, you should declare a national emergency. And switching gears in just a few hours, uh, there will be a focus on climate change at the White House today and tomorrow. The president will join leaders to discuss climate change. A few notable names in attendance, Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin. The minded person believes that cops, many of whom are racial minorities, get up every day and go to work hoping for the opportunity to be able to hurt someone, including but not limited to people of color. That's nonsense. But the Wokeristas, they really believe that. They really do hate cops just because they're cops. Violent crime has surged in major cities from Minneapolis to New York, where politicians have caved to protesters and pushed to defund police. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office will no longer prosecute prostitution or unlicensed massages. DA Cy Vance Jr. dismissing more than 900 open cases for those offenses. The DA's office will instead focus on providing services and support. Since 2016, the office has not prosecuted prostitution cases if the defendant went through mandatory counseling. The Virginia Department of Education is exploring a plan to end advanced diplomas. In a virtual meeting, the director of the education office said it was, quote, about how and where graduation requirements can operate as a lever for equality. The majority of advanced diploma earners were Asian and white students. That's according to the Department of Education. The proposed plan is looking to make sure students are ready for either college or the workforce. And the DOJ's investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department. Gianna, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, and okay. welcome back, Todd. Thank you, sir. Aww. Thank you, sir. So let's go ahead and pull up the what they would be reviewing here, and this includes policies, training, supervision, and use of force. It examines systems of accountability, determines whether other mechanisms are needed for lawful policing. Look, Gianno, I'm not a police officer. Don't know what it's like to have some content causing a 22-car pileup, leaving one person dead and several others hurt. My goodness, that is difficult to see. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, hail slamming parts of New York City. Fox News senior meteorologist Janice Dean joins us live with the latest forecast. My goodness, Janice, there's a lot going on. Historic April weather. Uh, we set records for the latest snowfall as well as 
cold temperature records, uh, record lows uh, today and yesterday. Taking a look at the wind chill, can you believe we're talking about wind chill as we head towards the uh, last few weeks of April? So 27 in Chicago, 32 in Cincinnati, 33 in Atlanta. It feels cold uh, for at least two thirds of the country and we have freeze advisories, freeze watches and warnings again uh, for some of these areas, including the South, Birmingham, Alabama, Nashville, past 24 hours. So that, that big front, that cold front that swept across uh, the East Coast, including the hail that we saw in New York, that has exited. However, behind it, we have very cold air and lake effect snow and some remnant snow that's going to go on throughout the day today as temperatures are going to be certainly cold enough for those snowflakes uh, through today and even tomorrow. And then better forecast, things will start to warm up. That's the, that's the good side is that because we're in mid-April, towards the end of April, temperatures are going to rebound very quickly and what's on the ground in terms of snow will melt. The rest of the country is fairly quiet. We do have more snow for the Rockies, the Northern Rockies, and then we're going to start to talk about severe weather Friday into Saturday. So it has been busy in the weather department. Hopefully people are safe. A quieter forecast, but we'll be watching the severe threat as we get into the weekend. All right, Todd. My friend, back to you. J.D., thank you very much. All right, President Biden kicking off his International Climate Summit today to lay out his goals for a greener future. But the congresswoman behind the Green New Deal says his plan doesn't match the left's vision. Listen. It is a crisis born of the pursuit of profit at any and all human and ecological cost, right. which means that we must recognize in legislation that the trampling of indigenous rights is a cause of climate change. The, the trampling of racial justice is a cause of climate change. So what do everyday Americans think about this, particularly those who have already lost jobs in the energy sector? We're asking laid off Keystone XL pipeline worker and a father of three, Lynn Allen. Lynn, let's start with AOC. You just heard what she thinks of your industry. What do you want to say to her? Uh, why is all the American people hurting? I, I would just like to tell her, you know, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I guarantee you right now, this is hard on everybody. This, this climate change ain't nothing but a joke. Oil and gas is going to be the driver of the, of the world. And, and these people keep going back, making excuses about racial and all, and, and the, the climate getting warmer. It, it, it has, this is really a joke. This administration, they need to look at the American people, how many is laid off, all of the money that, that the American families are losing and can't prosper their own families. And it's, it's bad. It is sad. Lynn, you were promised clean energy jobs. Do you have your clean energy job yet? No, sir, I sure don't. I ain't even heard of no clean energy jobs. The only thing I've heard about clean energy is solar panels. And uh, two days ago, a big hardware store had lots of solar panels on it. Yeah, they had good electricity. Guess what? It burnt down two nights ago mm. simply because the solar panels started the fire. I, I don't care about their solar panels and, and their wind generation and electricity. And, and all I'm saying is there is a multitude of oil and gas workers that are hurting and they need to go to work. And oil and gas, or the, the electric and the solar is not going to be the main pusher in the world. Oil and gas is why does America have to suffer and all of these other countries, Russia or China or Ukraine or Africa, why why are they not the leaders in all of this so called climate change? Why is America but every time we do all of the the climate change why is the american people always heard about it yeah lynn the goal one of the key themes of the climate summit today is to pledge to cut emissions in half by 2030 but to your point if china and india don't follow suit what good is the work that we do lynn allen we appreciate your insight on this letting us know how this is affecting the real people on the ground the people trying to make a living people trying to survive in today's society thank you sir jillian over to you thank you god bless america yeah. 
And it's 26 minutes after the hour. Is the post office spying on you? Yahoo News obtained a document that suggests it may be. And pay by the palm? Soon your hand may be all you need to check out. That story next. Maybe we have seen mostly peaceful demonstrations this week. Officials certainly hope that happens at Dante Wright's funeral later today. Todd and Jillian, back to you. And Caroline, thank you very much. President Biden celebrates 200 million COVID-19 vaccine shots in America. He's now urging young people to get their shots, as well as calling on every business to give paid time off for their employees to get vaccinated. No working American should lose a single dollar from their paycheck because they chose to fulfill their patriotic duty of getting vaccinated. The administration unveiled a tax credit to encourage businesses and nonprofits with under 500 employees to offer the paid leave. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo's staff cutting off a reporter asking about these sexual harassment claims against him. Listen. Will you resign from office if she concludes you did violate uh, the sexual harassment laws in this state? Yeah, let's see what the report says and then we will take it from there. It, it, it just does. Okay. You don't hear anything. The reporter later tweeted that he'd been intentionally silent, saying, quote, I got cut off while trying to follow up on this point. The U.S. Postal Service reportedly has an elite police force to monitor social media and investigate online threats. Cheryl Cassoni from our sister network Fox Business joins us live with more. Cheryl, this seems weird. I mean, it's not like they're crushing it with the mail service. We're just always well, being watched. So much for uh, dealing with those, you know, angry dogs right. when you're delivering the mail. Uh, yeah, how about an elite police force that monitors your social media? The United States Postal Inspection Service task force will enforce over 200 federal statutes related to crimes that involve the postal system. Analysts reportedly scroll through social media accounts are looking for inflammatory posts, uh, some of which are then relayed to other government agencies. And apparently this group has been in business for, for quite a while. A spokesperson telling Fox Business that the U.S. Postal Inspection Service occasionally reviews publicly available information to assess security threats to Postal Service employees, facilities, operations, and infrastructure. There are about maybe 200 crimes, I want to say, right. that, uh, you know, that can be made against the Postal Service that are, you know, federal crimes. So they're out there. Your explanation makes sense. My comment earlier, withdrawn. You explained it to me. I've learned <laughs> while watching the show. Julie. Okay, we even talked about Bernie Sanders in a little bit. So what's he up to? Yeah, so Senator Sanders wants to make college free. He said this before, but he wants taxpayers, in particular Wall Street, to foot the bill for this. The College for All plan would provide tuition-free education for all students at community colleges and public trade schools. If someone's family makes less than $125,000 annually, tuition would be erased at public four-year colleges as well as public universities. Sanders is proposing a financial transaction tax on stock, bond, and derivatives. Trades. Now, it's a small fraction, but if you're a Wall Street bank, that could add up. Yeah. But remember, this could also be if you're buying and selling shares in your own personal account. That, it, that's how I'm reading it, right. that it would affect you as well. And remember, free college is not free. Somebody is paying for it. Meantime, I don't know if you can see in a monitor, I just uh, spent $100 to buy one uh, Whole Foods scone. There, can you see it? <laughs> I just paid for it. But I have to say, welcome back, by the way. Thanks, Cassoni. Like, it's Thursday, and I'm finally saying this it's to okay. you. So it's fine. Better late than never. Right. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, look, yeah, so just when you got used to, like, scanning your phone at the checkout line, right, that took me years, Amazon is launching palm screening technology at a Seattle Whole Foods. They're going to test it here. It's called Amazon One. So customers would scan their palm, connect it to their credit card, then every time you check out after that, you just use your palm. Experts are worried this is going to be another security risk for Americans. I don't know about you, if you guys have tried palm scanning before, no. but my doctor's office has it, and it never works. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I find I'm, it so frustrating. I've never even awesome. used my phone to check out, so I'm way behind the times. Cheryl, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Kasson. You bet. Still ahead, our own Will Kane talks to sheriffs on the border. He joins us live with his firsthand look next. And from our friends at Fox Bet, download the Fox Bet. Arizona Governor Doug Ducey issued an emergency declaration over the border crisis. Fox and Friends weekend co-host Will Kane went there to get a firsthand look, and he spoke to a panel of sheriffs from around the country. Will joins us live from Addison, Texas, with more on what he saw. I saw you tweeting some of these uh, images, and some of them, I mean, pretty intense from when you went along with them and saw things firsthand. 
firsthand. You know, Jillian, I've been to the border twice now, which is two more times than the vice president of the United States has been to the border. And you need to be there to see what is happening. It's absolutely fascinating. An eye-opening look at this crisis we hear so much about from 30,000 feet. I got to get on the ground, see it, go on a nighttime raid, um, and really see the this group of sheriffs. Sheriffs from New Mexico, from Maryland, Virginia, from Nevada, and all the way from Massachusetts. You know, we brought this group together because we as sheriffs, the people expect us to do something. Sheriff, how far are we from the Mexican border right now? So we're between about 70 and 80 miles right now from the Mexican border. We are well within uh, the United States border. What they'll do is they'll come walking through the desert and then they'll wait here. And then the scouts, which you see in these mountains, will tell the vehicle it's clear to come pick them up. Now we've always been a traffic area, but we've seen a tremendous spike since January 20th. This is all them. Look at them just throwing. This is very fresh too, because I come out here often. So they'll wear these carpet shoes because they will mask the sound and we can't track them in the sand. This is the camouflage you're talking about. And it's almost like they have a border crossing kit. All these bags, this is your typical backpack here, like this one, standard issue backpack. Sleeping bags, jugs, clothes. They can carry far more value of drugs in these backpacks be between fentanyl pills and methamphetamines. In the year of 2020, New Mexico seized about 18,000 fentanyl pills. Year to date this year, we've seized over 90,000 pills. We have a experience an all time high of overdoses in Wicomico County, Maryland. Between 2007 and 2017, Massachusetts had the highest uh, influx of illegal immigrants into our communities in Massachusetts. It's often been said every county is a border county. Start with Virginia having arrests of cartel members, MS-13 gang members. I was with Sheriff Daniels last night. We're sitting here in Cochise County, and this is Sheriff Daniels County, and he told me the numbers have increased tenfold from yes. over a year ago. Yep. Um, you're all nodding along. You've all experienced yep. something similar? The Cochise County Sheriff's Office has a virtual system camera system. For 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As we sit here, there's a group not far from us, about 13, coming right on our backside that we're working on right now. So that you've already caught on camera. You can see them making their way through the mountains as we talk. Yeah, we saw them coming in the country illegally, and now uh, our team and uh, Border Patrol are working to get them right now. This is a very active highway. It wasn't that way before. But it's before. Become before the administration canceled all we just saw. You saw cartel smuggling. What can be done to solve this problem? It starts with the President of the United States. He needs to prioritize this border, all our borders, and there's consequences for breaking our laws. There is a rule of law in this country. We are, we are a country of immigrants. We all welcome immigration. We all do. We've all been beneficiaries of immigrants in our community, but legal immigrants. My parents did it right. We came here legally, but we need to fix the border crisis that we have. Because we're the county sheriff. When the feds fail, when the states fail, we're not going to fail our citizens because we're in church with them. We're at the supermarket with them. We live right next door to them. The people in D.C. or the capitals of our state don't care. We have to. You know, Jillian, this really brought it home to me to talk to these sheriffs from across the country that have come together with this organization, Protect America Now. This is a quality of life. They're tasked. Over and over again, talk about, and I'm curious how much they did on this as well, that, you know, once the drugs come into our country illegally, they don't stop at the border. So this is something that affects every town and every state in our country, besides just those along the border. Will, thank you very much for joining us. I think you would agree with that, though. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go to this break right now what they would be telling us. Yeah. Let us know. Do they want us to jump ahead to the us. first story? Sure, maybe. Quickly, is that what they're saying? Uh, that's a great transition. <laughs> uh, good morning, you're watching Fox and Friends First on this Thursday morning, I'm Todd Pyro. And I'm Jillian Mealy. So let's go ahead and begin here on the border. Fox News has learned the vice president will visit the Northern Triangle in June as images show cartels using TikTok to recruit American teens to smuggle migrants. And in just hours, President Biden will kick off a two-day virtual summit on climate change with world leaders. David Spunt joined us live from Washington with a very busy day ahead. David, good morning. 
Hi, good morning to you both. It was just a few weeks ago when the vice president uh, laughed when she was asked directly if she was going to visit the border. Uh, that clearly made some headlines there. She's not visiting the border, but as Jillian said, she'll be visiting the northern triangle countries. A source from the vice president's office confirms this will happen in June. She'll visit Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. But before she does that, on Monday, April 26, she will have a virtual meeting with the president of Guatemala. She has spoken to him before, spoke to him in March, talking about the migrant crisis on the southern border. Now, these countries, these three countries I mentioned, Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras, these are countries where a large chunk of those seeking asylum are coming from through Mexico to the United States. Fox News' Adam Shaw and Aisha Hosni are reporting that cartels on the southern border are targeting American teenagers through social media. These are American teenagers, specifically through the app TikTok, to encourage these teens to to help smuggle people into the United States, in some cases are paying two or three grand to do so. These migrants seeking asylum continue to come to the border. The latest numbers we have from Border Patrol, 320 migrants apprehended by Border Patrol agents in 48 hours, just two days. Meanwhile, Arizona's Republican Governor Doug Ducey said he's furious about the lack of visits from top administration levels to Arizona's border towns. There's a lot of focus on Texas. The governor says that's fine, but he wants more light on Arizona's border problems. And he's not alone. He activated the National Guard. Both Democratic senators, Kirsten Sinema and Mark Kelly, support that decision. Not a single member of the administration has paid us a visit here in Yuma or any of Arizona's other border cities. President Biden, you should declare a national emergency. And switching gears in just a few hours, uh, there will be a focus on climate change at the White House today and tomorrow. The president will join leaders to discuss climate change. A few notable names in attendance, Chinese President Xi Jinping and Russian President Vladimir Putin. The minded person believes that cops, many of whom are racial minorities, get up every day and go to work hoping for the opportunity to be able to hurt someone, including but not limited to people of color. That's nonsense. But the Wokeristas, they really believe that. They really do hate cops just because they're cops. Violent crime has surged in major cities from Minneapolis to New York, where politicians have caved to protesters and pushed to defund police. The Manhattan District Attorney's Office will no longer prosecute prostitution or unlicensed massages. DA Cy Vance Jr. dismissing more than 900 open cases for those offenses. The DA's office will instead focus on providing services and support. Since 2016, the office has not prosecuted prostitution cases if the defendant went through mandatory counseling. The Virginia Department of Education is exploring a plan to end advanced diplomas. In a virtual meeting, the director of the Education Office said it was, quote, about how and where graduation requirements can operate as a lever for equality. The majority of advanced diploma earners were Asian and white students. That's according to the Department of Education. The proposed plan is looking to make sure students are ready for either college or the workforce. And the DOJ's investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department. Gianna, good to see you. Thanks for being here. Good to see you, and okay. welcome back, Todd. Thank you, sir. Aww. Thank you, sir. So let's go ahead and pull up the what they would be reviewing here, and this includes policies, training, supervision, and use of force. It examines systems of accountability, determines whether other mechanisms are needed for lawful policing. Look, Gianno, I'm not a police officer. Don't know what it's like to have some.